Kuala Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news, Public Accounts Committee hears of unaccounted money. BGN told to get Tambua permit. An Oceans video launched. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Sagar. Some government ministries and departments cannot provide proper documents for unaccounted money spent over the years, resulting in write-offs. At the Public Accounts Committee meeting this morning, it was heard that these ministries failed to reconcile their accounts, which accumulated over the years. Rapate Valemai has more. The Ministry of Infrastructure and Transport was before the committee this morning to clarify that audited accounts. It keeps on accumulating after a while. And if the Ministry of Economy asks for reconciliation and balance in the documents, and you can't supply those documents because it's lost over time, then those accounts have to be written off. Sudaka says figures in the books presented to the committee do not match with the Ministry Bank statements, which is a trend for some ministries. With the, with the new uh, training of staff, as we have said uh, in Parliament last week, that uh, people are now appointed on merit and people who actually deserve uh, the post in the accounting section by open recruitment system and by, uh, by recruiting the right staff in those sections, we're able to minimize these problems. The Permanent Secretary for the Ministry, Paul Bailey, says the rotating staff members around the country. This means they have to learn from each other and will enable the Ministry to do correct postings in the future. We are reconciling them in effect through the, the ledgers. It might be that before we get into the audit, we sit down with the Office of the Auditor General and see what we can do practically to meet both their requirements and also, more, more importantly, our practical requirements of day-to-day -day operations. Different ministries have different rights off. Sudaka confirms a $1.8 million and $600,000 write off for two other ministries. The Public Accounts Committee will finalize a total amount of rights off and made it public. This is only after it is stable in Parliament. Rapati Valeme, FBC News. Fijians are advised to obtain the proper permit for tambua or whale's tooth when travelling to New Zealand. An export permit is needed to take tambua overseas as it's one of 34,000 species covered by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Spe Species or CITES. Akusita Tale reports this was highlighted yesterday when 148 tambua were repatriated to Fiji from New Zealand. Artifacts like tambua need an export permit to be brought into the country under New Zealand's Trade in Endangered Species Act. The New Zealand High Commissioner says with many people travelling back and forth between the two countries, it's important that more awareness needs to be raised on this. Unfortunately, not everyone uh, knows about or thinks uh, to, uh, to meet those requirements. And given the close links between Fiji and New Zealand, with many people travelling backwards and forwards, um, it is really important that we raise awareness of this fact. The Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species or CITES says people should make sure there is no need for future repatriation. The Fiji and New Zealand authorities are now providing more information to travellers about the need to obtain the necessary permits under CITES before travelling internationally with a tambua or other CITES listed wildlife. Scanlan adds airports, airliners and cruise liners can assist with signage to remind, inform and educate travellers of their legal obligations. The tambours that were repatriated yesterday were confiscated on the New Zealand border without proper documents over the past decade before the New Zealand government decided to return it to its rightful home. Akusita Tale, FBC News. A former Post Fiji employee charged with six counts of theft for allegedly dishonestly appropriating cash and stock while employed as a postmaster in Onoilao, appeared in the Suva Magistrates Court this morning. 30-year-old Jasoni Tukuda allegedly took cash and stock amounting to over $98,000 between October 2014 and May 2016. Tukuda presented two sureties in court and was granted bail with a bond of $500. He has been ordered to surrender his travel documents and report to the Nasinu police station every Wednesday. The matter has been adjourned to June 15th. 
A former chief administration officer of the Ministry of Economy was sentenced to 15 months imprisonment, suspended for three years by the Suva Magistrates Court this morning. Melila Sikulambitu was convicted for one count of receiving a corrupt benefit and another count of false or misleading information. Bitu, without lawful authority or reasonable excuse, received a benefit of over $12,000 for himself in May 2013. He also gave information to the former Permanent Secretary of Finance, Filimone Wangambada, in regard to the total cost of a surgery, knowing that the relevant information was false. He has 28 days to appeal his sentence. Well, still to come, Timor learns about Fijian tourism. And later in business, Rachel will tell you about HFC Bank and its expansion plans. Details after the break. Nimbula Vinaka, Naya Vanguna, and the Moal Rada Ranalika, or Tikungona Town of Singapore, and the Talisaka and Avarong and Bula Fan, number two in a series. We are the Rachubuni Kurambili, Borani Vatskara and Barabinarna. Total takin na warong ng Bula FM, number two and sere. Bula. Bula FM, number two and sere. Timor Leste stands to learn a lot from Fiji, and one area the nation is looking to capitalize on is tourism. Eleanor Taranga View was in Timor Leste recently and files this report. The Fijian hospitality is one of the many things that attracts tourists to Fiji. And the Timor Leste government believes its people can learn a lot from Fiji if they are to build the tourism industry. We do believe that we have, we have a, a lot of things to learn from Fiji. Uh, how to develop a country, the tourism the style of Fiji. With the country being only 15 years old, Timor Leste plans to continue to develop its relations with Fiji. Uh, I think the Fiji, Fiji have been doing quite well in, in, in the Pacific uh, so the last few years. And uh, to really take a, a clear position of, of sovereignty. We, we have a good, uh, established a diplomatic relation, but uh, no, no exchange of embassies still. For sure, our relation with the all Pacific countries will be developed. Timor Leste's Vice Minister for Finance says developing the tourism sector is one of the major aims of the aggressive development the country is undertaking. Lopez was in Fiji a few weeks ago and was impressed with the hospitality. I don't know it is because of culture or because of I don't know but this is what we are trying to do you know we would like to promote our tourism sector but people tend to very hard to even just smile so we need to do a lot of work to make sure that people are smiling to people so they cannot you know, give impression to people that, oh, we are friendly, we welcome people, please come, visit us, spend some of your money in our country. Timor Leste roughly gets around 200,000 tourists in a year. The country's economy is fueled by the oil and gas reserve with a population of over a million people. Eleanor Turangibu, FBC News. A week away from the UN Oceans Conference in New York and a promotional video has been launched to articulate the importance of the meet. The Itoke, Itoke Affairs Ministry is now compiling submissions received for the proposed village bylaws. One of the more interesting submissions was erecting fences to keep livestock from damaging root crops of farmers. Slaughtering livestock owned by someone else within the village boundary is something that creates disputes amongst village members. According to the ministry, most Itaukeis living in rural areas have raised the issue and want it resolved. It will create uh, more peaceful uh, relations eh, within the community rather than uh, hurting their feelings of killing the animals that they use for farming, for transportation and uh, also for their family purposes. The, the, the villagers, uh, they would like to increase the distance of the, uh, the boundary to instead of 50 meters to 100 meters eh? for, you know, the, the pigs and all those. Uh, and they, they said that 50 meters in the, the bylaw is a bit, uh, you know, not uh, enough. He also highlighted other submissions raised by mostly Itaukeis. In the village bylaw, it only concentrates on the roles of the Turani Koro. So uh, there's been uh, 
a big uh, support from the ITU community to also include the roles of the Velutaki Bagovanua, or those in the chiefly status. The ministry is currently compiling submissions before providing an update to the Minister for Itoki Affairs and Prime Minister Warangem Bainimarama next month. Sabera Tamboa, FBC News. More than three weeks since it sunk and investigations into what led to the mishap on the MV Southern Phoenix are ongoing. Fiji Ports Corporation Limited CEO Vajera Piasena says the removal of all oil and fuel from the vessel is days away from completion. Once this is finished, he says, a tender by the ship owner will be advertised to remove the ship from the harbour. In the meantime, a 24-7 surveillance in and around the site continues with the oil spill boom in place to contain any spills. The temporary restriction on travel in and around the MV Southern Phoenix also remains in place. PSN says it's of utmost importance to the authority that any environmental effects are contained and, where possible, minimised. Add in sports with Jamie, he will give us more on the Skipper Cup. But joining us next is Rachel with Business. Thank you, Amrita. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Chinese company, uh, shipping company expands into Fiji. And in growing Fiji, will bear a race to raise funds. Stay with us. I'm another sort of a of Nayabu when you got level. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. The operating arm of Esquire Group, a China and navigation company, has opened its new branch in Suva today. Managing Director James Woodrow says this venture will help boost cargo in traffic into Fiji. Swire Group has been servicing the Fijian market since 1958. Previously, um, we've operated uh, with agents here in, here in Fiji. Uh, most recently, Pacific Agencies was representing Swire here in Fiji. Uh, we owned 50% of Pacific agencies and uh, very recently uh, SWA shipping uh, uh, China Navigation has taken over 100% um, of that business so now uh, we have our own branch office here in Fiji to represent us. HFC Bank will open an additional branch at the Ganila House in Suva as one of its premium branches. The w only 100% a local bank in Fiji will open its doors to its customers from next month. Bank's acting uh, chief executive Raj Sharma says they will also open a branch at the Nakas in Nakasi soon to cater for the ever-growing population in the Suvanasori corridor. Sharma says they are working with the Reserve Bank of Fiji with a final check in terms of proper documents for the branch. This will uh, be one of the bank's premium branches in the country and they are looking at operating it seven days a week. What will happen, we are closing our boulevard branch and then moving to Nakasi. And in case of Nakasi, we already have a branch, but there are a couple of uh, job creations, uh, no doubt about it. Nakasi, we already have a branch, which is a Tambara <laughs> complex. We'd be closing that and moving it to Roops. And now seven others here from HFC Bank with the latest from the markets. Dr. Rachel, looking at our economic calendar for the next couple of days, and the basket of currencies which our Fijian dollar is pegged against. Tonight we have the EU consumer confidence figures for May expected to stay at 3.3%. Moving across the Atlantic to the United States, they have their personal spending figures for the month of April expected to increase to 0.4%. Also, their personal income figures for April expected to rise from 0.2% to 0.4%. If the speculation is correct, there's an increasing chance of an interest rate hike by the U.S. Federal Reserve in June. A positive U.S. data usually results in a stronger U.S. dollar and a weaker New Zealand and Australian dollar against our Fijian currency. That's the update for me. Back to you, Rachel. 
Thanks for the updates of another. Now let's take a look at today's exchange rates. The Fijian dollar weakened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 322 and 47 cents respectively. As for regional currencies, the Australian dollar rose to close at one, uh, 62 cents, while the New Zealand dollar dropped closing at 66 cents and the PNG Kina rose closing at 131. As for the commodities market, oil prices remained steady for another day, closing at 50 41 a barrel. Gold dropped to close at 1,267 an ounce and silver rose to close at $17.42 an ounce. In Growing Fiji tonight, a fundraising drive is underway that will contribute to the continued support of children with disabilities that need assistance to reach their fullest potential. The second amazing wheelbarrow race by Frank Hilton Organization will begin on the 29th of July. The race is an event that aims to raise funds to support the ongoing activities to cater to all development needs of babies and children with disability. The race is open to the public as long as you have a team, a member of of four or a minimum of eight raise a minimum of five thousand dollars as entry fee and be part of the race and that's a wrap from the business desk this evening jamie joins you now with the very latest in sports thank you rachel and good evening coming up night Siri prepares for high flying suva And Winston Hill moves Oceania Championships preparations to New Zealand. This and more after the break. I am a member of the Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बार टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवरों को नहीं, हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे, मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट। हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से, मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं, मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट, आई लव मिर्ची एफएम। हम एस बी इन टॉक पर वो आके मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे। मिर्ची एफ Naita Siri wants to redeem itself after its loss to Nandrangai in the Skipper Cup competition last weekend. Although the New Look Highlanders lead the standings with 16 points, they aim to improve on its weak areas that Nandrangai exposed before it takes on a strong Suva outfit this Saturday. Meli Tavanga has more. It will be a battle between two rivals when they go head-to-head -head in the fifth round of the competition in the weekend. Uh, since it's eight, just eight matches, we certainly look forward to Suva. They certainly got over Northern the past uh, week, the past games. They've been really tough and they've really learned a lot. And uh, going uh, from the Nandronga game coming tonight, we really, really learned a lot. A lot. Bolstering the Highlanders forward back, flying Fijians prop Ms. Sakindunga says win is a must. Nandronga, they, they challenged us in our scrums and mostly our lineups. So it's going to be a big work on for us, and especially our rucks and working through those uh, there was rock, rock situations and uh, ball toughness and I was really certainly looking to work hard on that. The management have been impressed with changes in their structure by coach Koli Sewambu. The new structure was put in place as we wanted to win the Skipper Cup this season. The new changes including diet, physical and mental preparations and also spiritual which lifts the standards of the players when playing on the field. The Highlanders last won the Skipper Cup title in 2009 and hopes are intense as they want to bring back the lost glory. Melitabanga, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Flying Fijians move into camp tomorrow to prepare for its test match against Australia next week. Head coach John McKee is expecting around 28 players in camp from tomorrow, with the majority of the overseas based players already in the country for national duties. Meanwhile, Flying Fijians captain Akapu Singera joins the team later in the week. Fiji will play three test matches next month before the World Cup qualifiers in July. I think you know, we've just got to work really hard next week in our camp and, and really, really not worry too much about the Australians, but make sure that we get our systems in place and get mm. our team combinations in place. And I think, you know, we, we go to Melbourne, if we can, we can 
we, we need to play our best, we need to be at our absolute best. If we can play at our absolute best and, and, and get a good start in the game. Fijian boxer Winston Hill leaves for New Zealand on Thursday to prepare for the Oceania Championships in Australia later next month. The 23-year-old will compete in this weekend's New Zealand Golden Glove competition as part of his preparations. Red Deo caught up with Hill earlier today. Winston Hill is trying to do all he can to achieve greater heights and has set his sights on the World Championships in Germany in August. Training's been rolling over. We feel good about uh, competing and meddling at this competition and it'll uh, just give us a good indication of where we're at. Hill is trying to become the first Fijian boxer since 2004 to qualify for the World Champs. He needs at least a silver medal at the Oceania Championships in Australia to do so. Just a gold or silver in the Oceania Championships to be able to qualify to the uh, World Championships. Um, we've seen what the other countries have to offer and we're right on par with them. We can compete, we can medal, and it's just a matter of time. He will compete at the New Zealand Nationals this weekend, which will boost his confidence. We plan a trip to New Zealand. It's actually a, it will be a sparring camp where he'll go and he'll camp with the eight-man team in New Zealand, and he'll get sparring over the next two weeks, and that's in preparation for the Oceania, which will be held in the Gold Coast on the 26th and 27th of, uh, of June. The Fijian is one of the top bets at the Oceania meet and will face tough competition from the New Zealand and Australian boxes. With the rate at which he is progressing, a ticket to Germany should not be too far away. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Vodafone Fiji football coach Christoph Gamel has drafted and super defender Peli Lairoti and railway Samuel Akautonga into the national team. The duo have joined camp in preparation for the FIFA World Cup Stage 3 qualifier match against New Caledonia. The first of the two matches will be played at 4 p.m. next Wednesday at Churchill Park in Lautoka. Meanwhile, Gamel has reiterated the point that Fiji footballers should be honoured to represent the national team. That is, it's, a, it's a game. Huh? Ooh, I have selected, I have extended list. I call them because they deserve it and they have to show. Now, you, when you come in national team, it's not that you want to come. You are called. You answer to the, your national duty, and if you are not, per, if you not perform, we release you. You don't deserve to represent your country. The Pacific Games Council still believes Tonga is capable of hosting the games in 2019, despite its withdrawal two weeks ago. The executive board met last week and have decided to make one final attempt to convince the Tongan government to keep the games in Tonga. They expect to reach a conclusion by the end of next month. However, if Tonga decides to stick by its decision to withdraw, the board will have no choice but to start looking for an alternative host. AFL Fiji will host a Level 1 coaching accreditation and umpiring workshop at Albert Park this Friday. The accreditation, which normally costs more than $300, is free of charge and allows participants to coach AFL anywhere in the world at the same standard delivered in Australia. AFL Fiji has two professionals from Australia coming over to run the course. The training is open to anyone interested and will run from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. That's it from sports this evening. Join Angie later on with weather. And in the world of the weird and the wonderful, we see how Turkey is using medical tourism to its advantage. Find out more after the break. Bula, kera mai singa toka, kera ndo tali taka na varo ronga na radio Fiji wan and ndo moi viti. I have a runner in the game. Uh, it's a good call out the tali taka na radio Fiji wan and ndo moi viti. We have a good call out the tali taka na radio Fiji wan and ndo moi viti. We have a good call out the tali taka na radio Fiji wan and ndo moi viti. We have a good call out the tali taka na radio Fiji wan and ndo moi viti. We have a good call out the tali taka na radio Fiji wan and ndo moi viti. In new media tonight, Bitcoin, the controversial digital currency, recently made headlines for reaching a record high valuation. But perhaps the bigger growth potential lies in blockchain. The technology behind Bitcoin and similar cryptocurrencies is being explored by more conventional companies and businesses. We now join Angie with weather. Hello 
there and welcome to the weather world. The sun was in action for all of us today, but we might want to keep an eye on the rain clouds that covered the clear blue skies this afternoon. And tonight will be another cold one, perhaps with some showers, so keep yourself warm. Looking at today in the west, it was mostly fine and sunny, but there is a slim chance of showers expected by tonight. Eastwards from Pek Harbor to Suva, after early morning showers, sunshine came on board and gave us a soothing day. And up in Vanua Levu, it was a bit cloudy, but all that clouds got nibbled away and we could see clear blue skies. At sea, east to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. It's pretty bumpy out there. And for the tides, high tide tonight will be at 10.51 with a low tide at 4.51. Sunrise will be at 6.30. For tomorrow, it will be fine, but you might have to run out again to collect your laundry because we are looking at few occasional showers that will linger by. Tomorrow's temps, Suva and Savu Savu will be the coolest at 28 degrees. Looking ahead to Thursday, it will be a gorgeous sunny day apart from few early morning showers for the northerners. And that, Amrita, is FBC weather for tonight. Thanks, Angie. And on Fijian Pulse today, we asked what action should be taken on those who default on town rates. I think people should probably try to remind themselves uh, probably break the payments down yeah it shouldn't be it shouldn't happen because different people face different problems every single day so they, the government should actually give them time for them to pay up uh, and give them a deadline so that they could also meet their needs and, and whatever they're facing through their homes I think they should be given more time <laughs> Some action needs to be taken so that they also pay. When everything is being taken care of, people need to pay. For people to use these services, people should pay up. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, Turkey is fast becoming a top destination for medical tourism. Tens of thousands of people a year are flocking to Istanbul and other Turkish cities for procedures ranging from gynecology to orthopedics to plastic surgery. Now recapping the main stories. The Public Accounts Committee hears of unaccounted money, Fijians told to get the war permit and Ocean's video launched. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question. This week, we are asking, are certain politicians taking advantage of sugarcane farmers for their own gain? Visit our FBC website to answer. Now, before we go, today's shot of the day comes from the beautiful island of Yesawa. The sunrise shot taken by Rosero Inoke shows the sights the islanders wake up to most of the days. You can always send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email at FBC FPC News at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. And that was your FPC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable week. Good night. My name is Sant Kumar, we listen to Radio Fiji 2 and we are all the best Radio Fiji 2. We are here, Radio Fiji 2 is the best station. My name is Bruce Rao, we are here at Market Venda and Radio Fiji 2. We are here in 1954. We are here in Kabuli, my name is Ramesh Chan. और हमारी मछली के धंधा है और हम सब टाइम रेडियो फीजी टू चलता है। रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन